Chapter 26, A is for idiots. At first I'm thinking there's no good reason to take advice from Ray Ray. Why should I? Except then, a few days later I get this big fat A on my report for Bud Not Buddy. And if you're wondering how that's linked to Ray Ray, peep this. When Miss Green hands back the reports that day, she skips right past me. She holds onto my paper and goes to the front of the class. Pay attention, everyone. I'd like to read some of what Kenny wrote, Miss Green says. No problem, right? Wrong. This is just about the last thing a grandma's boy like me needs. Arthur flashes me a thumbs up, and Lucinda Moorhead sits up a little straighter. But behind me, I can hear people making sounds like air coming out of a leaky tire. I don't have the nerve to turn around, but it feels like I've got a whole row of lasers pointed at the back of my head. I'm not even sure which part she reads. I'm too busy waiting for it to be over. Finally, after about eight years, Miss Green stops and asks, Does anyone have any questions for Kenny? Yeah, someone whispers behind me. What's it like to be the world's biggest geek? Are we supposed to call you teacher's boy now, someone else says. And then, do your legs get cold when you wear a dress in the winter? That one cracks everyone up, until Miss Green yells at them to be quiet. Dwayne, Kwame, Kwashi, she says. That's enough. I'll see all three of you after class. I know Miss Green thinks she's doing the right thing, but I sure wish she hadn't said anything even though they're the ones getting in trouble, something tells me I'm the one who's going to pay. I also wish Grandma hadn't made me read that book a second time. Then maybe I could have gotten a nice ordinary B, and all those guys could have used someone else for target practice. But you know me, I want a, I want a lot of things I can't have. Chapter 27, Climb to the Bottom don't get me wrong, okay? It's not like I want bad grades. There's plenty of reasons why A's are worth working for. I get it. I really do. But now that I'm in middle school, it's kind of complicated. See, if you're not careful, or even if you're unlucky, like if a teacher makes the whole class listen to your stupid report, then all that work can start to turn against you. One second you're doing okay, and the next, boom! That A you thought you wanted turns right around and bites you in the butt. And usually by then, it's too late to do anything about it. That's how it went with my book report, anyway. Miss Green's English class was only the first bad thing to happen to me that day. The first, but not the worst. Just wait, there's more. Chapter 28, All Wet. After English, I make a quick pit stop in the second floor bathroom which turns out to be a big mistake. Remember when I said you never want to get caught alone in the bathroom at UMS? You don't. But you know how it is. Sometimes when you've got to go, you've got to go. I try to make it fast. I don't even bother washing my hands, not that there's any soap or paper towels left anyway. Still, before I can get to the door, it swings open and in walk Dwayne, Kwame, and Kwashi are, also known as Crush Kill. And destroy. Sometimes they even tag the outside of the building with a CKD. Graffiti is like an art form around here, or just a way to let everybody know who's running the school. You didn't think Tiny Simpkins was my only problem, did you? I wish. This is one way that middle school is like superhero comics. Every time you get rid of one bad guy, there's at least one more waiting to take his place. That's how it works. Just ask Batman or Spider-Man, or stainless steel. Meanwhile, I'm trying to get to the door, but I've got this quashy-sized wall in my way. What up, Grandma's boy, he says. Thanks for getting us in trouble back there. I didn't get you in trouble, I say. That's not how I see it, Dwayne says. He brushes right past me and turns on one of the sinks. I reach for the door again, but then Kwame grabs my backpack and spins me right round. That's when Dwayne sticks his thumb over the faucet. He sends a jet stream right at me with perfect aim. And I mean right at the front of my pants. 
Now I look like a kindergarten who isn't quite potty trained or a dude with a bad bladder problem. Either way, it ain't a good look. My backpack hits the floor. Dwayne, Kwame, and Kwashi start cracking up and pointing at me. And I'm standing there in a puddle like I need my diaper changed. Why don't you write about that next time, Dwayne says. He kicks my stuff toward the toilet stalls, and then the three of them laugh themselves right out of the bathroom. I don't go after them, obviously, even if I had the guts. I don't have the muscle, and even if I had the muscle, there's no way I'm going to go running out there looking like this. Now I'll have to spend the rest of the day with my jacket tied around my waist and carry my books all front and center until I dry off. All because of one stupid book report. I don't get it. It's not like I'm the biggest brain. I'm not a butt kisser like Lucinda Moorhead either. And I know for a fact that some of the other kids live with their grandmas, including Kwashiar. So how come I'm the official school punching bag? Weirdly enough, that's when I start thinking about Ray Ray. He's even skinnier than I am. He's hyper as one of those elementary school shorties. And he's totally annoying. But people don't ride him the way they do me. Even when someone does mess with Ray Ray, it's like he doesn't even care. Like nothing ever bothers him. And I'm thinking, how does he pull that off? What's a secret? On the real, I wish I was more like that. Which is the weirdest thought of all. I mean, if you'd told me at the beginning of the school year that I'd ever want to be anything like Ray Ray Powell, I'd have said you were crazy. Straight bananas. Nuttier than one of Gma's pecan pies with extra nuts. But guess what I'm figuring out real quick? Middle school's crazy too. And nutty isn't always the same thing as wrong. Sometimes in life, you have to get in where you fit in. We just went over this in science. It's called adaptation. If your environment changes, guess what? You better change or else. So now here I am, actually wanting something from Ray Ray, if I can get it. And like it or not, there's only one way to find out. I'm going to have to ask. Chapter 29. Never thought I'd see the day. I wait until we're playing chess the next day, so we're good and alone. I don't want any witnesses for this. We're about halfway into our first game. Ray Ray's trying to figure out his next move. I even left my rook wide open on purpose, but he doesn't see it. I need to ask you something, I say, but don't get all excited about it. How come, he says, he's already excited. The thing with Ray Ray is he's kind of like a blender with no off switch. There's just fast, faster, and fastest. He probably ought to be on one of those prescriptions, but I don't think Ray Ray gets to the doctor too much. His teeth are messed up too. Jacked, like he's chews rocks for breakfast. Every morning. You know how you're always saying I shouldn't let people mess with me, I say? Yeah, Ray Ray says, what about it? Well, don't let this go to your head. But I was sort of wondering if you could maybe, you know, tell me how, I say. Ray Ray just shrugs. It's like you expect it to go down and it shows. Looking scared is the same thing as being scared. You got it? If I got it, I wouldn't be asking you, I say. How am I supposed to just not be scared of someone bigger than me? It's not like I can turn it off and on or run down to the corner store for some guts. That's when Ray Ray starts to get some kind of new idea. I can see it on his face like he just won a hundred bucks on a scratch-off ticket. So that's how we're going to do it. You give me lessons, I give you the lessons. That's the new routine, Bama, he says. Who said anything about lessons, I say. Just tell me what to do. Yeah, right, he sits back and points at the chessboard. Because you're just going to tell me how to play chess, huh? I'm starting to think this was a bad idea. Not because Ray Ray's wrong, but because he's right. If I'm going to toughen up, I'm going to need some kind of practice. I know exactly where to start, too, Ray Ray says. Already he's pulling out his this phone I didn't even know he had, and he starts tapping away. Hang on, I say. What are you doing? You'll see. It's a surprise, he tells me. And speaking of surprises, he leans in then and slides his queen all the way across the board to take out my rook. Bet you didn't think I saw that, did you, he says. Nope, 
I definitely didn't. But then again, it seems like there's a lot of things I don't see coming these days. Chapter 30, Meeting the King. Just before 4.15, Ray Ray starts putting the chest stuff away. Come on, he says, it's almost time. Time for what, I say. He doesn't wait for me, though. He just walks right out of the room and leaves me standing there. Part of me thinks I should let him go. You never know what's going to happen next with Ray Ray. And I don't mean that in a good way, but I'm curious, too. And I did ask for his help. So I pick up the rest of the chest stuff and head out after him. When I get into the hall, Ray Ray's right there. What are you doing, I say. Waiting, he says. A second later, the detention room door opens, and the D-Squad for the day comes pouring out like the Nationals on opening day. I see Dwayne and Vanessa and Jerome and Tiny, too. I don't want any trouble, Ray Ray, I say. Ain't gonna be any, he says, just the opposite. You remember I said how you're always acting like one of those pawns just waiting to, be, to get picked off? Yeah, well, get ready to meet the king, he says. Watch and learn, son. Then he starts moving again, heading up the hall just ahead of everyone else. When we get outside, there's this black Jeep sitting out front. The stereo is knocking. It's a track from Wales' first album. I can feel the bass in my chest all the way from the curb. The Jeep's right in the place where you're not supposed to park, and it's got two bad-looking dudes in the front seat. The one on the passenger side looks a little bit like Ray Ray. What's good, Nick? Ray Ray yells out and keeps walking toward them. That's when I figure out who the king is. It's Nikki Powell. The Nikki Powell. I can still remember the way Dell and Vashon bugged out when they found out Nikki was Ray Ray's brother, which of course makes me even more nervous. What's someone like me supposed to say to someone like that? Nikki looks me up and down when we get over to the car. Then he turns the stereo down, but I can still feel the womp, 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 womp vibrating in my ears. This is Kenny, Ray Ray says. He's standing on one foot and kind of bouncing up and down. It's this weird habit of his. Chill, Ray Ray, Nikki says. And Ray Ray puts his other foot down. You can tell he thinks Nikki's that dude because Ray Ray never does anything anyone tells him. You the one who's teaching Ray Ray chess, Nikki says in a slow, cool draw. He sounds like one of those late night radio DJs, but cooler. I wish I had that voice. Yeah, I say. At least I know how to answer that one. Thanks, man. I owe you. Nikki reaches out the window and gives me a pound. Hop in. My man Trayvon can give you a ride, he says. The guy behind the wheel hasn't looked at me once. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I do know what Gma would have to say about all this. That's okay, I say. It's not that far, and my grandma likes me to walk straight home. Nikki looks at me now the same way Ray Ray does sometimes, like I'm some kind of charity case. We're working on it, Ray Ray tells him. Yo, Kenny, you've got an audience. You want to hang here with them, or you want to roll with us? I start to turn around and look, but Ray Ray puts a hand on my neck. Just pretend they're not there, he says, like you couldn't care less. Got it? I got it, all right. I just figured out that Ray Ray's doing me a world-class solid here. Introducing me to Nikki Powell right in front of the D-Squad. I'll bet this is frying Tiny's brain into a crisp, like, cheap bacon. You know, the kind that shrivels all the way down until it looks like a stick of gum. And either way, he's right. The last thing I want right now is to get left alone with that crew. So when Ray Ray opens the car door, I go ahead and get in behind him. Then Trayvon pulls away the, from the curb, fast and loud. Whale spits the second verse of that track that I can't remember the name of, but that will come back to me sometime later today. I never look back, not even once, but I sure do want to.